I can hear you. Hold on. It's you can not hear my me. Fault. I can't hear you. I think we're going to have Good Day Frank on in a couple weeks, right? I hope. Yes, Frank? How we doing? Hey, -o. How about, oh yeah. What's up, Megan? Right. How you doing? <laughs> I'm no longer green. <laughs> so much more handsome, Mo. Oh my There's Mo. God. I don't want to, I don't want to like. So handsome. Have you guys like not see Mo Hello. there? Look at that guy. Dapreneur podcast number two, um, French for my Canadians out there. Um, my name is Mario. I, uh, I am the creative director and owner of Made by Maker uh, out in Hawaii. Uh, and my beautiful co-host, Mo. Go ahead, Mo. What's up, party people? My name is Mo Ismail. I go by Mo Isma on all social channels. I'm the managing director over at Mox. We are a video production and video marketing agency for lifestyle brands. That's what we do. Oh, and Senor Dave. Hey guys, this is Dave Coe. I'm from Vancouver, Canada, up north. Uh, I run a little motion uh, studio here. Um, yeah, and these guys are my fellow dadpreneurs. Yeah. My name is my name is David Coe, and I am the owner, founder, and uh, entrepreneur of Canada Dry Ginger. <laughs> <laughs> We're sponsored by Canada Dry Ginger. No affiliation. <laughs> no affiliation. No affiliation. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, well, two things. I want to start. I want to start us by giving our, our top two things that have happened over the last couple of weeks uh, yes. since I saw you guys last. Uh, one thing, top thing in kind of business and then top thing in family. Like uh, it right. could be, you know, I don't know, could be some, some milestone or just something funny that happened uh, in either way, either, either side. Let's start, let's start with that. So top two, and then uh, we will launch into our topic of the day, which would be launching of businesses and family the decision to do that stuff Ooh. boom 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 david you go first because i have mine ready <laughs> you have yours ready <laughs> i have my two ready so you go first okay <laughs> because you have yours ready because he has his ready um it's kind of related to business i guess this week i had the privilege of uh, meeting up with uh, a couple of the local motion design companies two i would say two of the largest ones in town here giant ant which is like the yeah it's like our buck canada's buck mm, wow like, yeah they uh they they do amazing cell animated type work um i mean they do lots of other stuff but that's what they're known for uh, i just actually met with jay grandin who's the founder him and his wife leah are the founders i met with him this morning before this this call all right and then uh uh, how at uh, line test which is the which is another a smaller version uh, of kind of a similar type of work they do they do kind of cell animated um character sort of driven work Ooh, nice. um, talented bunch of guys so uh, it was great meeting up with them and and um i mean i'm a much smaller studio than they are so if uh, i think it's a good contact i think you know, some friendships were started there and, um, you know, if they happen to have smaller work that comes in, in their doors that they can't handle because it's too small, we can pass it on, you know, to me. So yeah. um, those are great contacts to make this week. And then as far as uh, family stuff, I don't know, every day is an adventure. Um, <laughs> but my girls have been uh, this week, I don't know, like sometimes there's like this jump of development yeah. and that's always exciting to see as, as a, as a parent so this week they've been talking a lot more and their sense of humor is getting a little bit more like um like more intentional like they know oh. like this is what's happening like they uh -oh. know what they're doing is they're like, making jokes and it's gonna be yeah funny. they're yeah. making <laughs> jokes in their own ways and they've Love like it. since they've turned two it's been a few months now um they're more verbal they're putting like <clears throat> almost, like almost full sentences together now yeah so um yeah it's really interesting to watch and watch the development that, i think that's the coolest part for me as a parent one of the coolest things is to see your kids develop um and like when they make those quantum leaps it's like whoa like what the heck so quantum leap yeah quantum quantum leap <laughs> Dude, I love that. That's awesome. Love it. Can what, are we gonna bring the the kiddos on the show at some point? Is that is that like a thing that can happen? Maybe we need to have like a behind the scenes discussion on that. My kids aren't like my, my kid is not on social, so I'm gonna uh, yeah I'm gonna need to um, have a wrangler if I did that. 
<laughs> I'm gonna need to have some kind of a, uh, you know, like partner in crime. Like, hey, bring them in. All right, shuffle them back out. <laughs> Who's that? Like an executive assistant to your yeah, to your gonna, son on set for absolutely. his for his debut. I need. Like, I'm I need, sorry, he's he's hungry right now. He needs his food <laughs> before he gets on camera. Type yeah, thing. he's he's got he's got to have the right makeup and conditions. He's he's oh kind of a diva God. already at at 15 months. So I love it. <laughs> My kind of guy. Okay, it. my two, my two. Uh, Business-wise, we uh, landed a new client, closed that. We're gonna, and it's a, we're gonna start on that next week, literally. Nice. Uh, finished up a big part of a website project. We're doing. I know we're. I know I said we specialize in video, but we have some older uh, clients that just trust us with a lot of things before we niche yeah. down. So finish the copy for that. So that's business stuff, uh, family stuff. Got my Halloween costume in the mail, and it's going to be our first family Halloween. So uh, I'm a character of three. I'm not going to ruin it on the podcast right now. Well, actually, no one will hear us until after Halloween. So yep. my family is doing Winnie the Pooh. And Ooh, I, nice. guess who I am? Just take a wild guess. Just if You guys know me pretty well at this point. Who do you think, I, what character I am? Would it have a long tail and you're jumping around a lot? You're, you're damn right. I am. You're damn right. I'm Tigger. Damn right. I am. And aside from the Halloween costume, we were actually able to extend my son's daycare to full time. Oh, outside right. of part time. So in That's... connection with last week's podcast, that has helped a lot with the scheduling and the balancing act because yeah. I don't have to pick them up dead center of the day and everything is just, you know, shot. And now it's a full time day. So those are my wins. Right on. Boom. That's awesome. Not dropping the mic. <laughs> uh for me um had a really great uh meeting and then started some strategy for uh one of these local brands that um is looking to just kind of uh get to that next level fitness brand really amazing guy he's got a great vision of what he wants to do so we started on doing some strategy uh this week also uh as far as family my daughter who's three is going to be she started sleeping in her big girl bed so this week yeah so it's been an adventure, just kind of like having pillows around her bed to catch her when she falls. But my wife's mm. gone in twice and she's been asleep on the floor. <laughs> so just, I think she's like falling out of the bed and just kind of like, oh, it's just, it's just too far to travel. So I'm just going to sleep right here. But uh, that's, been, that's been a little bit of an adventure. So it's been really fun. I have a, I have a falling out of the bed story. Please do. I don't know if I'm just allowed to just share stories. Like, well, I mean. Regularly before the topic, you know. It's our it's our hour so you go for it you use it's your- our you you're damn right it is our podcast okay <laughs> here's my story there was a there was a weekend where my wife olivia was out of town and it was me and the young and he was still trying like he was still sleeping with us in our bed and somehow even even though there was a fortress of things around him he <laughs> happened to maneuver either under or around the fortress and at 4 a.m in the morning i just hear it and then (laughs) and i wake up in sheer panic i'm like oh my god oh my god and i grab him and i'm gonna be honest with you guys the drop is it's it's a drop like it's not like it's not like a foot off the floor it's like a good three and a half four (laughs) so i was terrified you sleeping on a, like a, a castle bed? Or what's going on? <laughs> oh, no, I don't know. It's just a, it's just Is it elevated. a raised crib. <laughs> well, it's out. He was with he was laying with me at the time. Oh, he was laying with me an hour. It's your fault. I'm saying. sorry. I'm gonna get hounded by. This is why I don't talk about family stuff online because I mean I can already see the parents that like oh, outed Pink on her That's... Instagram coming for me and my family. Please, <laughs> please don't judge our parenting style. That's why I'm openly sharing with you guys. Well, Anyways, uh, picked him up. He was fine. But in that, sh- like 4 a.m., half asleep, scared to death. I just wanted to share that story. It's fine. And then all the other parents were like, it's fine. It's fine. Kids fall off the bed all the time. They, they fall okay. off the bed and they're fine. Yeah. yeah. It's all okay. Every parent gonna, has a bad parent. I was like, thank God. Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, like, like, I just wanted to pose that question. Like, if you guys are watching this, um, comment below if, uh, you know, you've, you've actually been next to your kid when they've fallen off the bed because that's definitely happened to me. <laughs> And also, I've, I've kind of had them on the bed thinking that they were not going to move. Yes. And then last second, I look over just as the foot is coming out of, out of my view, falling to the floor <laughs> off the bed. I'm just like, no! It's like slow motion. Just like, no! 
don't know. So God, it's the worst. <laughs> it's the worst. I'm just still trying to understand how he maneuvered around all the safety precautions that like the the pillows, the railing. Like what? How? I don't understand. Like, anyways, here we are. After that so commercial funny. break, back to your regular schedule Absolutely. program. Back to your regular schedule program. Wait, in, wait until they get uh, a little bigger. My four-year-old comes in, comes to our bed almost every night in the middle of the night. Oh, man. And sleeps, which is fine because he's not going to be doing that for forever. But yeah. um, what happens inevitably is he starts with his head on he, – we have a little pillow for him in, in between my wife and I. And then he ends up horizontal. So – Yes. Usually his head ends up on my wife's side and I get the feet oh. in the face. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. so it's like all night I'm like battling <laughs> to, you know, keep the foot off my face. My, um, my one-year-old my one year old doesn't know how to sleep parallel to my wife and I. Like mm -hmm. no. when, when we were bringing him into the bed, like immediately he would, he would be nursing with my wife to my right. He'd be in between us and then he would be just padded like, going like this in my head just yes. to make sure i was there just to make sure i was there and then inevitably five minutes after he falls asleep he's he's like forming an h with us a hundred like yeah. his head is just like ramming into my ribs and he's just punching me he's dead yeah. asleep i'm just like come on kid it's <laughs> my bed so our king our king bed turned into a twin real fast <laughs> real real fast I had a king i've bed. learned i've learned to sleep on air <laughs> just like half my body is 100 percent elevated in air it's at this it's point. a it's amazing how comfortable you can be on six inches of bed right <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so comfortable so. <laughs> let's talk about launching things like um businesses and families like um how was that decision uh come to you what what was the thought process behind that what was um you know we can even go back as far as like getting married initially and just deciding to, I think we talked a little bit about in, in a couple of our groups about uh, commitment, right? So this is mm -hmm. kind of like that commitment step to, Hey, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to be a business. Um, you know, Dave, you've, you've had a, um, a couple of different, um, um, you know, you had some design um, jobs before you actually went, you know, to um, full-time entrepreneur and, and Mo, you, you had different jobs, completely different non-creative jobs, right? Mm -hmm. So like, what was, that, what was that decision like when you finally I, decided to pull that trigger? I actually um, never had a job. <laughs> really? I, I thought you worked well, for Chris for a while. You I did. For Chris. I, I, yeah, right? Thoroughbred I was gonna say, with the exception, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> with the exception of my short stint at Blind in the early days, yeah. um, I worked there maybe six to eight months, six to nine months. Uh, I've been freelance pretty much my wow. whole okay. career because I kind of started off freelance and then um, a few years in, Chris asked me to consider coming on staff because I was doing a lot of freelance for, for Blind. Mm. Uh, and I tried it and, and I just discovered, and it was kind of a weird place in my life too, but I discovered that uh, freelance suited my lifestyle or my preferences more. Um, and I think it's because I have more of, uh, of that sort of entre entrepreneurial bent mm -hmm. and I don't, I don't know i just i like the freedom of yeah you know, working when i want and <laughs> on what i want we're really just kind of lazy people right <laughs> maybe that's what it is. oh god here we go call me out, call me out. <laughs> don't don't big brush us please don't big uh <laughs> don't just what's it called uh, wide brush, uh, whatever. Broad, i don't know broad, brush. broad strokes Broad strokes. Wow. I love Mo. Mo thinks of his own versions uh, of yeah, exactly. common common sayings. Big brush, you know, big uh, brush. Big brush. Big brush. <laughs> yeah, big brush. Big brush stroke. What is that? A new swimming technique? Okay, sorry. So yeah, Mo, go for it. What was uh, my journey? Know, talk, talk us through. Talk us through some some. Yeah, some I mean, big, I'm a, decision I'm, points and stuff. You're you're kind yeah, of. Yeah, I'm an right? academic. I'm an academic through and through. So my journey, and I talked on this on like another podcast, is like my mom is a professor. So I thought that I was going to be a professor. Like that was the game plan. Right. And, <clears throat> but the creative bug just would not escape me ever from writing to, to music, to just any type of visual comms, like photography and videography. I was always dabbling, but I never fully took the plunge. So after undergrad, I wanted to pursue music full time and writing full time. And I, and I didn't, I 
pursued a career that I had started in undergrad that I leveled up in management and hospitality. And then I realized that that wasn't the life that I wanted, particularly because uh, it just didn't feel like I was fulfilled in hospitality management at the time, right? Yeah. And then so I was like, okay, well, uh, I know how to academic well. So I went and got my master's. And then that was really the breakthrough for me when I saw other uh, graduate students pursuing their PhD and the level of commitment and intrinsic motivation that was required to get that degree, I realized that I would be doing it at that time for reasons strictly because it was the next thing to do. And I was like, that's not, that's not what I'm about to do. Because four years in writing and researching and, 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 and publishing, that's just like having an entrepreneur. Like that, I'm sorry, that's just like having a business, right? You, you have to really be motivated to do that kind of work. So when I realized that, I just asked the question to myself, what would be the issue if I did, if I pursued my dream, right? And did it for 10 years, I could fail miserably. And education is still always going to be there. Like a university is always going to be there. Education doesn't go anywhere, right? And that's when I made the plunge because I recognized how unhappy I was in doing something that didn't have uh, uh, a real deep reason. Like I couldn't tell you why if someone was like why are you getting your master's or why would you if oh, sorry if why are you getting your phd and be like oh well, because it's uh, maybe after the master's you know versus like i'm doing this because of a reason that's bigger than myself and for a bigger purpose so that was my commitment uh recognizing that that's not what i want to do a, a very deep uh hole of unhappiness and then just being like what's the alternative and i always ask that question and then just took the plunge and here we are long-winded ass answer yeah you said you said the business is about two years old right yeah 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 just about For, formally llc wise formally two years old uh in total with my business partner about three because we were freelancing together but not in a formal business yeah. oh, okay so you're just kind of like teaming up and mm -hmm. moving forward mm -hmm. right yeah i have a I have a similar ish um kind of story like dave although i didn't didn't work with blind. Um, <clears throat> so I started, um, I was going to school. I was in the middle of going to school. I've, I've told the story to you before, but I was in the middle, middle of going to um, art center and um, I was like halfway through with my degree program and uh, some friends were working at Disney and invited me to work at, come, come out and work. And I was like, all right, cool. I get to, you know, practically ap apply everything I'm learning. And this is like internet heyday. So this is like way back in the, you know, nineties, um, mid nineties. And, um, and so I was like, all right, cool. And went out there and, um, started doing some really cool stuff that nobody else was doing. And I decided, all right, I'm just going to walk away and I'll, I'm just going to freelance. So what I was doing is I was contracting for Disney uh, for two years. And then after that, I, I freelanced at a bunch of different little mini studios and, and places for, for years. And it was kind of like really fun time because you could do anything, you know, mm -hmm. web was just kind of like on that huge upsurgence. Um, um, I was learning anything I wanted to learn really. I was like learning 3d on the job. I was learning motion design on the job. I was doing, um, at that time I was like, flash was a big thing. I was doing kind of like cell animation and, and, interactive stuff with flash and um and so everybody was like like hankering to do anything and everything on the web so i was able to like use a lot of those skills and do all that stuff for a bunch of different little places all around and i'm in la so i was or i was in la so i was doing everything was entertainment based so it was all, all kind of like big and grandiose and fun mm -hmm. and then um <clears throat> and then freelance was just kind of like it was hard to maintain because i was just like LA is just a big place. So I was like running all over the place and um, trying to just kind of keep everything together. So I ended up uh, working for a few different places um, before 9-11 and then 9-11 hit and then everything kind of dried up. And that's mm -hmm. when I actually went back to school to finish my degree and really just kind of use it as a connecting point. Um, when I got out, 
I was, I was still kind of like freelancing for a little bit, worked with some friends at their studio. And then we all got hired into a bigger kind of um, content creation place um, called 42 Entertainment. And that's why we did some all, all some crazy. 42 like, Entertainment sounds like a rap label. <laughs> yeah, we were all, uh, and we're they're all the part f- of 40, 42. Yeah, they're the, and then the furthest thing from anything rap. I guarantee you. <laughs> I guarantee you. But uh, yeah, so we did some really cool stuff for like the Dark Knight and like um, Ford and Toyota and like just some really cool like subversive campaign stuff. You and, and then, Dave just, I'm sorry, I'm just going to keep it. You and Dave casually say these huge brands <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, I work for NASCAR and uh, yeah. you know, Heath Ledger's the Dark Knight. And it was cool. Uh, Disney. Yeah. It's like, what? <laughs> did what? Some, did, did some Disney did stuff too. I think because of it's not like I was like, you know, hanging out with Heath Ledger, you know, before he died. It was just like, it was just like, you know, we're, it's just a job at that point. You know, you're just kind of like, it's another client. It's another problem to solve. It's another, another thing to do. Um, and then things kind of went south when the real estate market tanked and everybody was kind of like, nope. So uh, got laid off from that company and then I moved to Hawaii and then now here I am kind of doing my own thing. And there's really no other, I've tr- I tried to to work for somebody here and it was like so difficult to just be there every day. What do you think that is? What what genetic disposition do we have <laughs> that makes us just recollect working for somebody and be like, ooh, yeah, I guarant- about that experience? I guarantee it, it's laziness. I think it is. <laughs> it's I don't not, know. Laziness I, is just such a negative connotation. I know. That's what you're saying. You know, it's like having to go somewhere and do the same mundane task every day for someone else is just kind of, um, it's drudgery. It's, it's horrible. Mm-hmm. Doing that same thing for yourself is different because it's, it's, it's for you, it's for your goals. And those, those things that you have to do are all focused around goals that you have, right? So um, I, will, I will gladly do the mundane task for my business. But to have to have to go to some place, sit in some office, in some cubicle or whatever, and have to do their mundane tasks, you know, it's. I was talking mm-hmm. to Steve Boyne about this the other day, and um, sorry, Steve, I'm going to out you a little bit, but um, you know, he's just where, he, is, where is Steve? <laughs> he's supposed to be on this. Thing. I know he's. Uh, I'm getting him on. He's he's just he's being a weenie. Um, he's no, he's he's super, he's. He's super, he's super, he's super busy right now. But, um, so he, yeah, it's just like, he, he has this job that is, he's, he's full-time, you know, at some place. And then he's literally more than full-time with his, his side hustle is almost bringing in as much as his, his mm. full-time gig. He's you an know? animal. He's yeah, he's a beast. So, he's um, an sure. yeah, it's, I don't know if you guys can, can, can like, I think it's different being an academic might be different. I, I would imagine it's, it's a different thing, you know, mm-hmm. but um, Dave, you can speak to this a little bit more, like just kind of like having to go somewhere and like kind of maybe do things that are, I don't want to say beneath you, but just, they're just, they're just mm-hmm. mundane tasks. You know, they're just like the day-to-day stuff. And some of it's awesome and amazing and interesting. And some of it's just yeah. making you question why you're there. I think, I mean, I feel like I've sort of scaffolded up to where I am now. um, Because when I started, the reason I started freelance was because I wasn't, I was just kind of learning motion because I came from a film background Mm -hmm. and I was dating someone who was a creative director um, that hired motion. Well, they had a small motion, like I think it was like two animators or something at the time. And I just kind of learned waiting, like learned After Effects waiting for her after work, like to go pick her up. And then I, <laughs> and I kind of would play around and I got an opportunity to, to, um, to make one for uh, one of their clients. And she's like, actually, this is pretty good. And maybe we can include it in the pitch. And so they did, the client picked it. And then from then on, she said, oh, I think we could maybe hire you for the next one. And um, actually, Chris Blind used to be one of the companies that she hired to do the more complex stuff. Oh, nice. um, so she told Chris about me and Chris was like, yeah, sure. But we need someone on this project and, you know, maybe let me take a look at his reel and whatever. And that's how I kind of got started. But each time I freelanced at different studios, I learned their process. 
mm-hmm. and I learned little techniques from the different yeah. artists that, at those places. And when I got to a place where I felt like I feel pretty like competent doing what I'm doing uh, and then started taking on projects, like bigger projects myself, and then handing those out to freelancers to help me, you know, building a little team and then building bigger teams. Um, so I don't know, each, each step was like a progression. But one of the reasons I think um, as great as it was being at Blind, um, and Chris and I have kind of stayed in touch since, but um, it was just like, I miss that one learning from different Mm-hmm. people in different environments mm-hmm. uh, and then secondly like having tasted freelance which you're making like twice as much generally than you know yeah. a salary job um and everything you do like in a sense goes in your pocket versus when your salary mm-hmm. you're working for the company and you yeah. get a set secure you know whatever annual salary right Um, and then take it to the next level where you're taking on projects directly from clients, then like you get to set sort of more parameters of the project. Uh, And, and obviously the, because you're taking on more risk, the profit margins are bigger and, you know, so I I don't know, for me, it was scaffolding from one to the next, the next. I think we're also talking about like three different types of businesses, right? So you're talking about the business owner, the freelancer, and then the person who works in-house. Dave's model that he's talking about, if I had to do it over, I would take that approach first. I would get my feet wet in multiple different agencies as a freelancer, learn how they do things, create this composite of processes, then make my own, and then start my business. Because that's just how I roll, right? Like I I student first, and then I apply. That's why I say like, I use the Gary Vee language like, I don't think I'm a born entrepreneur. I have entrepreneurial tendencies, as he puts it, <laughs> until, until, until I become a savage and I'm like, oh, I guess I was an entrepreneur the whole time. But I agree with Mario also, when you're in-house, I wouldn't necessarily say the mundane tasks are what get me. It's I have this desire to make it more than just within my role. Like I want to feel like it's 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 doing something for of greater impact and there's only so much that you can do when you're bound to the role in-house right because just by hierarchy like you have to you have to give this to someone else and someone else approves it and and whatnot and i'm and i'm a big fan of what i do having touch points that are beyond just okay well you got your file in the email or this is off the list in in the project management system under mo's name you know and then you have the business owner, which is the person who's over everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my guaranteed. Wife just, uh, my wife just gave me, my executive producer just gave me <laughs> yeah. the, uh, the, the time to pick you're up. Ra- you're wrangling. The, yeah. So <laughs> the rest of the conversation is awesome. And I'm ready for, I'm ready for a good day, Frank, next week or yes. the week after next. A couple weeks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Ooh, I wonder oh. if I'm going to be able to do that. I'm going to be in LA. Oh, how are you? That'd be fun. I I'm gonna be oh, in the that. future headquarters. Well, then you can Friday. do it from you can do it from there. <laughs> then <laughs> hey, you can bring in the guys from from the future. There bring the whole squad up, just a whole yeah, bunch of dads. Bring Ben just on. A, just a squadron of dads. Just All right, let ben. me go. It's right, been guys. it's been real. I'm gonna go pick up the young, and you'll have an awesome rest of the podcast. See you, Mo. It's really fun to freelance so much because I did do a lot of that kind of like learning, but at the same time, I was such a uh, an independent like hired gun that I was like kind of like I was the one kind of driving a lot of like of their creative and things like when I would mm. when I when they would hire me to do something they would hire me to do like a very specific thing that they couldn't do so mm. it was like I was never I was never really able to learn from different studios as much I unless I like worked with them you know yeah um, like or in-house for a little bit but yeah, I think it's a different dynamic. I mean, the studios that I work with, they're, they were more established than, than at least like, I mean, Blind wasn't that big then. It was, uh, I think there were, the smallest it was like three, not was including the, was Chris that the bre- and his wife. Brewery days when he was at the brewery, like the little brewery, like the lofts over there. Like he moved into, like he was there, he was living out of there and he was doing his studio out of there too. Oh, that might have been before he they moved into this house. Okay, yeah. yeah. This, this was a house in Venice Beach. 
Yeah, yeah. So this is like before that, because that's when, because yeah. I when I started getting into more motion stuff, I ended up like finding out about Chris and finding him um, through I think the alumni network or something like that when I was working okay. at Disney. Yeah. Um, he it was like right I think it was right after he started. I think it was right after he like left uh, Kyle and like he yeah. was kind of like freelancing back for him. Yeah, that was probably 94, 93, 94. Um, I think around that time, because he was, he started blind with like four people. So it was him, yeah. Jesse, and then two other uh, arts undergrads. Um, Michelle, I think it was Michelle Doherty was one of them. She she moved on to be an art director at um, Imaginary Forces. Okay. I got to work with her a little bit there too. That's but, cool. Um, yeah. The, the, I mean, we worked out of his house for the first bit and then they moved to a small it's not even small, but smaller than what they had, the building that they have now. Um, and then that's where I was, I came on staff for a bit. And then now they're at the big, the bigger yeah. building. Yeah. He, he like totally opened his door. He's like, Hey, just come in. I'll take a look at your portfolio. I'll check it out. And like, he just sat with me. It was like, his studio was like empty at the day for that, yeah. that time. And it was really cool. Like just kind of like the same, it's really neat to like know somebody over different decades and mm-hmm. see how they really haven't changed. It's just like their the largeness of their their kind of impact has has just increased. But um, yeah, that's been it's been really cool. So okay, it'd be interesting to get Chris on here and talk to him about the days when like when Otto was born. Yeah, and how it impacted how he approached business. Because yeah, so what about um, talk about marriage, Dave? Like how how did how did you guys meet and start? your family and make the decision to actually start having kids. You guys have been married for a bit, for right? 11, like, this is our 11th yeah. year. Yeah. October. And your oldest is four? Is four. Yeah. Okay. So we actually tried for a long time to, to have kids. And so oh. um, we ended up going the IVF route, um, which was another whole journey with in and of itself. Um, yeah. So when we actually had our son, that was like something that was extra precious for us because we, we had been trying for so long and sort of imagining, you know, building the family and stuff like that. So that's why we took uh, two years off when our twin daughters came along two years after our son. Yeah. We're like, okay. We need to like, we don't want to neglect our kids and like just, we just want to pour like our complete attention on them so both of us took uh two years off my wife is an accountant so she kind of she had the the steady the decent well-paying you know steady job and then i was the uh the business who had the higher earning potential but also had the potential to earn nothing the bad year (laughs) yeah (laughs) um so yeah so after we after we had the twins and we had took two years off um we had planned that i would go back into business and run it more, uh, more like a studio. Uh, whereas before it was kind of like, um, kind of like a, a freelance, a freelancer with, you know, an expanding team. Um, yeah. So I'm kind of starting off there at this point, like springboarding off there and, and moving towards, uh, you know, uh, building a, some sort of studio. But this is, I mean, uh, we, we've talked a little bit about yeah, this. Yeah, I was going to say. So I've come to a point where like, do I really want to do this? Am I yeah. looking into the second half of my life or do I want to move on to something else and yeah. something where I feel like I'm really contributing more to society and making an impact in this world for my kids? Because I think when you, when you have kids, for me anyways, my perspective on life changed quite radically. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm still kind of in that space where I'm like, do I do I want to move forward with this or not? Or it's a it's a different phase of life, right? Like it's just that that different uh, it's a different um, thought pattern where you're you're kind of focused on not so much like um, earning potential, which is always in the back of my mind. And I'll just speak for myself, but like there's this there's this thing in happening in my brain where it's like, yeah, I do need to make money and I have to support my family, but what's the most, like kind of like what you said, what's the most impactful thing I can do for these little humans that I'm trying to raise in the best possible way? And yeah. what's the, what's the legacy I want to leave for them? Is that, is that a business or is that, is that time? Is that, is that myself, you know? And, yeah. you know, I'm sure 
this happens with you as well. And like um, when I'm dealing with my kids or I'm, I'm, I'm interacting with my kids and I'm often thinking about um, my parents and like the, the interactions or, or lack of interactions that we had growing up and, and things and, and um, just wanting to do better always, even, even though I had a, had a you know, relatively decent childhood and there's some, there's some aches and pains and there's some you know, challenges for all of us as a family. But um, there's always in me this desire to not to make a perfect childhood for my kids because I don't think that exists, you know, but a childhood where, where they're just, they feel kind of like what you're saying with your wife, you wanted to instill in them this, this feeling of safety and love and, and wholeness for these, for these little amazing people that we're raising. Right. It's always my challenge. I'm like, is, is this going to drive me? Is this, is this thing that I'm doing right now going to drive me to be a better dad and a husband Mm-hmm. And leave a better legacy of of interaction and, and relationship with my kids, or is this just going to be a thing that I do for work that's going to pull me away from those things? Right. You know, and I think that's the thing I'm battling all the time. Yeah, it's, it's such a tough. I mean, we talked a little bit about it last week or the last show, but um, such a it's, it's such a tough thing. There's so many pros and cons on both sides, right? Because yeah as a business, you have the flexibility to like, for myself, like my, my son goes to preschool um, for a few hours every day, Monday to Thursday. So four days a week. And I have the, the privilege to drive him there to drop him off and pick him up. Um, Which I wouldn't be able to do if I was, you know, if I had a salary job somewhere. Yeah. So those kinds of things. And and every morning I get to, you know, make breakfast for my, for my family. So those kinds of rituals, built into the day i i don't know it's hard to give up after um after this amount of time and uh especially because for us you know starting a family was was a was a difficult um process yeah um i think we just value it even that much more not that you know every parent every parent obviously does but for us for us it's like super super i don't know we 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 just made it a priority i think and so um i couldn't imagine doing that at a I would, I would think, I would probably say that there'd be very few jobs, like nine to five yeah. jobs where you'd be able to do something like that. Yeah. There'd have to be kind of like an open door studio policy. And, and I know that, I know that those things exist, those, but I, they don't exist in my world. Definitely. Um, and I just, that the, just the knowing that you have the freedom to, um, you know, work when you need to, instead of work when you have to almost. Right. It's like, you're not you're not tied into their schedule. You can you can go and you can take your kids to the doctor. You can right. hey, you know, we're not. I'm just going to take the morning off and I'm going to go just spend some time with my kids and we're going to go to the beach or we're going to go here or there, and and just kind of develop them, you know, holistically and, and emotionally that day instead of just you know um, sending them off to you know a caretaker or whatever. There's a I think there's a there's a preciousness about this time that I'm never going to get back and. And I want to make sure that I'm, I'm doing everything to, to take it all in as much as possible. You know, um, I have some friends that, that, that went through IVF too. And, and it's the same thing. They're just like, they're so, they're so grateful and excited about being parents. And, um, and it was a challenge. Like they, they had, they had a lot of, they had a lot of issues leading up to even trying IVF and then it didn't work out the gate, you know, for the first, even first couple of times. And so, um, but when it did, it was, it, you know, they were, they're like the best, they're the best parents, you know, they're, they're awesome. They're just, they're just, and, and they've, they've done everything or they're doing everything they can to kind of really be a part of these kids' lives. And, and I think that's the best thing we can do, you know, do what we can to, to build these families as much as, as much as we can. And, and it, it translates to our business and it translates back and forth, you know, the, the things that we learn dealing with, dealing with clients and, and dealing with with human beings and, and the lessons we learn is just going to translate directly into our family. I think instead of, yeah. instead of just kind of being at some place all day, that, that is not, not as, not as impactful, you know, Mo kind of talked about a little bit more about being directly impactful of, of the outcome. And that's what I think like being entrepreneurs does for our families. There's, there's a direct impactfulness or impact. I don't know. It's a terrible word, but direct impact on, on our lives, good and bad. I mean, we're going to have bad days with, 
with work and we're going to have bad days with our family and it's going to, you know, affect both um, vice versa. But yeah. the biggest con I think for me is that running your own business, it's always on your mind. Like you're never yeah. off in a sense. Like, I, I mean, I try to keep the weekends off like where I just shut down Friday, Friday at six, I shut down until, you know, we're back up on Monday, but um, it's hard. It's like, you can't always turn off that switch because you're always thinking things are sort of brewing. You might be out with your family on the weekend and something, you see something or, you know, it gives you an idea on a project that you're working on or whatever. Yeah. So you're always thinking about stuff like that. Whereas I think salary <laughs> job, you're, cause you're working for someone else and you kind of clock in and clock out. However, yeah. rigid th- those schedules are like, you know, like there's a certain, there's a more defined boundary in terms of like what's required of you or expected of you. Whereas when it's your business, like there's no end to how much you can (laughs) have in your business, right? Honestly, there's only been like maybe two jobs that I've ever worked in. One of them was the gym recently. And and another one was when I was working for this educational company. Those are the only two jobs that I really had like, um, like really good boundaries in my in my work my work life time because other everything else was like like startup grind all day long even though your salary you're just like it's it's not it's not only always on your mind but it's just it's consuming all of your time as well because you just there's just always something out the door even if you're working for somebody else or even especially but yeah it's it's my career has been kind of really just nonstop nonstop especially at the beginning it's hard right the beginning of anything just to get the the inertia going the momentum going um it's extra hard and then yeah. once even once you get the momentum going you got to keep it going so there's that element but at the beginning it's like exponentially harder right to get it to get the ball rolling so yeah absolutely you know. yeah yeah we it's and just you know kind of talking about that commitment thing it's just like if you're not fully committed to doing it, then, then it's going to fail. So if you're not, if you aren't doing all you can to keep that inertia going, then it's going to, it's going to stop and it's going to be in a place where you're not going to, you're not going to be able to be, you know, anywhere as far as like where you want your business to be. And it's not going to, it's not going to produce the kind of fruit that you need for your family too. So that mind switch, you've got to like really kind of like, constantly direct your focus to whatever you're doing and and it's hard to turn off the the business in the back of your head especially as i think we're we're starting to produce more content and things like that because then everything becomes content (laughs) yeah everything's potential content (laughs) yeah it's like oh man this is like i got to turn this off at some point i don't think i'm a natural entrepreneur even now i don't feel like i'm i don't even know if i'm a very good entrepreneur i think I'm just not the alternative. Like I, I uh, I'm not a nine to fiver, like, but I'm not a natural entrepreneur in that. Like I, I'm a great risk taker or like, you know, right. I'll, uh, I'm an opportunist and like, I just see something and I'll just like, you know, put 110% into that one, you know, possible yeah. like opening of an opportunity. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it is, uh, but you know, I know I'm not the alternative, which is, you know, the, the salary nine to five. Right. 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 Can't clock out. I, just, how, I want to hear a little bit more about, um, I mean, if, if you, if you'd care to elaborate, like how you guys were able to take two years off, that's, that sounds amazing. Honestly, like yeah. how, how did that, how did that come about? Like, I know, I know the decision to make that was for your family. Definitely. But so the first year was uh, in Canada. You, the, um, if you're employed, uh, then you you can take up to I think now it's extended but with a smaller percentage of what your so- normal salary was but um, you could take a year off so you can split it between like if if uh, you know if the woman who's giving birth wanted to take the full twelve months she could or she could take six and then the the husband can take six oh, okay um, so you can split the mat and pat leave maternity and paternity leave that's awesome um, from work but since i'm running my own business like she just took out the max like she did it she took her time off right. so that was one year um that took so the government paid us I, I don't know what the cap is but not her full salary but a you know decent chunk of it yeah um and then you know i just i 
I didn't, I, I think from a very young age, like my parents being immigrants and stuff like that, we were just taught to save. <laughs> and so yeah. even as a freelancer, like I learned very early on, like um, there is a, fa- uh, a feast and famine cycle. So when it's feast, you don't go and spend whatever you earned, like you right. Know, save, right? So um, I learned to live on, you know, a, a pretty frugal lifestyle. Like I'm, I don't buy a lot of stuff. I'm not like extravagant in in my spending so i think from my early days of freelance i just kept saving away and investing saving away and investing yeah um so we had a decent uh, between my wife and i and she's an accountant so she's always been pretty you know uh good with her money so put that together and, and we had a decent we had built up a decent amount of savings where we could um, take some time off and so even our vacations we weren't very extravagant in our vacations either so um, yeah. And then even with our kids, when we had our first, we already started planning when we got pregnant with our first, we already started planning to leave, you know, savings, start saving up for education, start saving up for like, you know, when we die, like we, they, we leave uh, our son and our two daughters with, you know, enough for them to start something on their own, um, and have their education covered and all that stuff. So, I felt, I don't know, like, I, I guess we felt comfortable enough with our financial situation where um, we had kind of done all these like, you know, 15 years, 20 years of like saving money. One year turned into like two years because we were just going to take a year off and they were like, it's hard to go back to work. <laughs> this is really good. And I this think is really it's, nice. It'll, it'll pay itself <laughs> forward with our relationship with our kids. And yeah. Um, so, yeah. And then after the two years, uh, uh, when the two year was coming up, we're like, one of us should go back to work. <laughs> so, one of us should actually do some work. Yeah. So, <laughs> it was my turn to step up to the, to, to the plate. Yeah. And uh, I think my wife, I don't know. I mean, she ideally doesn't want to work anymore. Um, yeah. But we'll see. We'll see. It'll be d- dependent on, on how well my business does or not. But um, at, at the earliest, it would probably be until, you know, our daughters who are two now turn six and they're full-time grade school. Yeah. And then she can think about whether she wants to go back into to doing work. I can imagine how hard it would be to go back to wanting to do work, especially after two years. I mean, I did it, you know, when my daughter was born, um, I was home cause I was, I was just doing contract and freelance work um, and doing work with my brands that I had. Um, so we were, my my wife was working and then I was working at home. And so I had my daughter with me all day, um, every day. And it was fun because she was, she was tiny, you know, she was like, it's from like, we, you know, America has terrible maternity and paternity leave. So she had the max at six weeks. So she went back to work and I had my six week old baby daughter and she was going to the gym with me and she was going, running all my errands with me. So she was just kind of like, at my hip every day, all day. And, and so we have this like really special relationship because of that. Cause mm. you know, she's just, she's, she's not, she's not so much that, I mean, she's definitely a daddy's girl, but it's because we were together 24 yeah. seven, like every, every day for, for her, her, her first, wow. For her first year and a half, you know, um, of life. And then it was a huge impacting change when I went back to work. Um, or when I went to, to a job to, to work, you know, out at a place every day, it was a big change for my daughter. And, and, um, it's funny to see her kind of like coming alive again when, now that she sees me more often mm-hmm. and, and she's more, she's more engaged in, in things. Kind of like you said with your, with your son and your daughters, they're, they're kind of like, there's this, there's this like s- surge of like, like development, right. At certain times. And it's really exciting yeah. to see that. Yeah. Like when the kids are, you know, really rowdy, I can he- faintly hear them. Yeah. Um, so they're like, a part of me is like, should I go down? Like, do they need help? Or like, they're having lots of fun. I want to be part of that too. So <laughs> it's hard sometimes to stay focused on like what I'm doing in the office. Um, yeah. But I, I mean, the pro is that like I could go down. Like, yeah. I, if if I was ever needed or if I ever really wanted to 
and what I'm doing right now is not that pressing. I could go down and enjoy a little bit of time with them and then come back to work or whatever. Or like, you know, you have a bad day or a slow day or whatever. And you just need a little pick me up. And my kids always like pick me up. So <laughs> um, I don't know. It's I, I'm torn because my wife and I talked about like, should I? Because when I came back to work, it was hard for me psychologically, like to get into the mindset of like, yeah. okay, I'm working again. Um, being so close. So we were talking about maybe I should get some, you know, a, 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 an office or, a, or at least even a, a shared office space, like a WeWork or something. Mm -hmm. Definitely um, not a WeWork though. Definitely not a WeWork. <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> but something like it. Yeah. And I'm the same way. Like I, I'll hear them outside and I'm just like, oh man, that sounds either like I need to step in right now and help my wife out because they're, you know, they're, they're overtaking her or, um, or whatever they're doing just sounds like so much fun. And I just want to see them, you know, playing around. And, and so it's, it's tough. It's tough to like, it's tough to turn both off. You know, I, I don't want to, I'm trying not to feel, I don't now. And now I'm, I've kind of changed the way I think about it a little bit more, but um, when I'm doing work, I want to make sure that I'm trying to like focus as much as, as much as I possibly can on that. Um, so I'll try to like adjust my headphones so that I can't hear as much so that I'm just like, kind of like tuned into, <laughs> yeah. tuned into my work. And then when I'm with my kids, like, I don't want to make sure, I want to make sure that I am not like, I'm not thinking about work or yeah. it's, but it's really hard to put that phone down and like not answer emails or not answer messages and not interact with social. Um, yeah. Social and amazing community that we have, you know, um, with, with groups that we're a part of and, right. but um yeah so i don't know it's 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 like day to day there's just there's this thing is day to day that um you know starting is just the one thing you know that 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 had to happen for things to happen but it's the day to day that that carrying on and putting your putting your hands to the plow and just kind of like working and working working day in day out and making sure that what we're doing is not not going to be in vain right and yeah. you got to got to keep doing it with excellence and things like that so yeah. Being a human being, it's hard to keep investing in something where you don't see like huge gains. But or even immediate, even immediate yeah, things. Or, yeah, or right? immediate gains, right? So, yeah. and just like anything, because we want to see, we want to get that immediate feedback, especially these days with, you know, the type of media that we engage with most, most frequently. It's like you get immediate feedback and immediate yeah. sort of this dopamine hit or whatever. But with the type of the work that we're doing, we just got to keep chipping away, like knowing, yeah. believing that what we're doing now is going to make some sort of incremental difference towards getting to the goal, right? So, yeah, I was, I was talking to somebody about like um, building, building towards something, even though you know, even though you're not gaining feedback knowing that at some point your what you what you're building day to day is going to pay off in some way for your yeah. business like i'm trying to well, how do i say this there's there's a cue we're building of of content or of information or of prowess that we're building day to day and at some point it's going to tip the scale towards right. the other way and you know everybody everything else is kind of oh that's what I was, I was talking to michael janda mm -hmm. and we were talking about like people like um tom ross and like diane gibbs and um there's this kid out of uh london mike hirons have you ever heard creative waffle uh, he was on diane's oh, show yeah, one time yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah. through diane like <clears throat> they don't like he doesn't have he doesn't have that many followers but he's interviewed like Aaron Draplin and Steven Sagmeister and like mm. all these like huge centers. And it's, it's a good little podcast, you know, and it doesn't have a lot of followers. Um, Tom Ross, I know that he's super, he's doing really well, but he's got a really low audience uh, compared comparatively to, you know, his impact um, who does design cuts. And then Diane, like really doesn't have that much of a, an audience of which I'm surprised though. Cause she's, she's you know speaking everywhere and she's mm. doing this she's been doing this for three years her podcast and i'm just like mm. wow that's that's crazy to me that you know these people that are putting out really valuable content aren't like aren't being you know 
I don't know. If, I don't know if it's a. I don't know if it's a personality thing because Mike Mike Janda said that in April of this year he had seven hundred followers. Yeah, I, I remember seeing from well, not seven hundred, but yeah. in his early days. Yeah, and he has seventy thousand something now. It's crazy. So anyway, keep 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 going, keep on keeping on. I guess that's the lesson for today. Yeah. yeah. Any any final thoughts? I feel grateful that we we can do this. Like we can sort of um, be available to our families in in a in a different way than if we were you know um, salaried. So that we're able to to run our businesses like this, but at the same time, it's not easy. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, so it's um, I'm grateful. I guess I'm more grateful than I am, like, if this didn't exist or this <laughs> didn't exist. I don't know what I would do. Man, I'd be I'd just miss my kids all day. Yeah, I think the the opportunity to do what we do is is a special thing. I know it's just so many people that are have traditional jobs and they just don't have the opportunity to do what we do. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I guess I guess everybody has the opportunity to do it, but there's just in their life, there's just no there's just no opportunity to do kind of uh, an independent entrepreneurial venture like that, you know. And and so yeah, it's it's I think it's a blessing, and and it could become you know a big a big cursing too. But um, as long as I think we keep level heads about about what we're doing and and who we're doing it for, um, we'll maintain a, a a level of um, I think a level of sanity and a level of excitement about both about being able to be available for our families and being able to be independent business owners, you know, yeah. um, which is cool. And I think, I hope, I hope that lasts a long time. <laughs> and I, I hope I'm always going to be excited about having my family around. <laughs> <laughs> some days though, some days, three yeah. o'clock in the morning, I'm just like, kid, go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I, I pretty much uh, accepted the fact that I'm not going to sleep for for a yeah. long time. Yeah, till they're <laughs> till they're, they're going off to college or something. Right? Yeah. And then you uh, won't sleep because you're worried. Like, yeah, what are they so, doing oh, now? <laughs> man, just wait, waiting for him to call. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Dave. This has been amazing. Thank you, sir, for joining me. This Thank is uh, this is Mario. This is Dave. And uh, thanks for hanging out with us, guys. Are there any other Canadian ginger ales? Dave? Canada wet? Oh, wow. I need to get I, I that think, put on think,